Hi, welcome to another edition of Creative Current, a weekly webcast where we explore the arts in LA with some of the most interesting people driving the cultural scene. Uh, we have a terrific guest for us tonight, uh, but before we get to him, uh, I need to say a couple of words. Uh, since this show uh, is a half hour that's in, uh, not interrupted by any commercial announcements, I do need to acknowledge up front the support that we get uh, from some of our local merchants. Uh, E-Third Steakhouse and Lounge uh, on uh, 3rd Street near Traction is a fabulous fusion steakhouse, steak with uh, an Asian flair. Metropole, which, which uh, uh, um, specializes in pasta, pizza, and panini on 3rd Street near Santa Fe. And of course, Wyland's Brewery, uh, our own downtown Cheers at First in Alameda, right across from the Japanese American Museum. Tonight, our guest is David Melville from the Independent uh, Shakespeare Company. Welcome, David. Thank you for having me. Uh, now, David is the uh, co-founder and the managing director. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the Independent Shakespeare Company has been in Los Angeles since about 2019. No, we moved here in 2002. 2002. We were in New York for a couple of years before that. And your first home uh, was Barnsdale Park. Mm -hmm. And uh, your first performance uh, uh, drew an audience of 14 people and one very literate dog, I understand. Uh, but of course, the uh, uh, situation has changed dramatically since then. Uh, you've recently relocated uh, to Griffith Park, uh, to a much larger space that accommodates crowds as many as 800 people, to these free performances. Um, and your most recent two shows, uh, Othello and uh, Much Ado About Nothing. Yes. And um, uh, tell us a little bit about these two shows and how it went and uh, how, how it was that you, the, how, how you worked in your new space. <clears throat> well, it was... Uh, uh a um, bit of a risk for us, really, because we had a good thing going at Barnsley Park. Um, you know, it was packed every night there. Um, but <coughs> what do you think? Um, anyway. yeah. So, um, yeah. I'm talking to you. We're okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So we were we were doing really well at Barnsley Park, but uh, we were exceeding the fire marshal's limit on our space, which uh -huh. was about 450 people a night. So we. We uh, had to find somewhere else to go, and, and the city had talked for a while about moving the festival to Griffith Park, and we thought we should uh, go before we were pushed. <laughs> and uh, um, Othello opened with uh, with about ninety three people in the audience, um, and uh, it was <laughs> and it closed with eight hundred. Uh, closed with uh, Othello closed with like, you know six or seven hundred people. Uh, oh wait a minute, technical, technical issue. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's uh, maybe uh, I can quickly adjust this a little bit. There we go. Try that. All right. Are we good? Can we do another take? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just see. Um, we're still, still, we're still not getting a mic here. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Anyway, so yeah, Othello. Uh, uh, it, 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 it took it took hold very quickly um, in Griffith Park, and it was. Uh, you know, I think we lost some of our regular audience from Barnsley, but we got so many m more people uh, from, from uh, you know, the, the, you know, the Griffith Park is LA's park, and it has a really diverse, uh, uh, you know, group of people that use it, and they were they started coming to our shows. It was amazing. Well, and part of the mission is to try to get new people to come to the shows, right? Yeah. Uh, we're still having we're still having uh, technical difficulties here. There you go. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's the, the mission is to is to bring as many new people into the theatre as possible, and uh, uh, you know I think Griffith Park is is you know ideal for that because it's well, and Othello's a great show to premiere in a new location because it's a very popular show. I mean, everybody loves the <laughs> the well. People generally prefer the comedies when they're going outside with their picnics. So That's it was a true. bit of a risk to you know to start with you know what ostensibly could be a downer, but um, well, was, Iago is such a creepy character, <laughs> and people I think people like. Creepy bad guys. Yeah, and he's he's he is like the the ultimate uh, 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 creepy bad guy. Uh, he's very misunderstood. Yeah, well, we were talking earlier uh, about um, this fascinating story. Uh, when I asked you if you had become something of a, of, a, of a Shakespeare scholar just having the experience with all of these plays, and uh, you were telling me that the character of Iago may be based on some historic. I was reading this book about the murder of Christopher Marlowe, and there was one of the people that was 
present when he was killed was one of these Secret Service members called the, uh, he was called uh, Robert Poley, and he was a, a, a full-time uh, liar, basically. You know, a very charming fellow, uh, but really quite deadly to be involved with. And uh, in, in reading, I just happened to be reading that book when we were rehearsing Othello. It wasn't something that I was naturally, you know, studying. Yeah. Uh, for the play, but uh, it just occurred to me that there was a, a, you know, there was a correlation. And I did a little bit of research, and there was one other um, uh, uh, chap, Michael Wood, who made this PBS series about Shakespeare. He also uh, made the same comparison. So I found, thought myself terribly well, graduate smart. students. You've you heard it here first. So here, <laughs> here's a little bit of, uh, of Othello here, I believe. Is that right? That's Cameron uh, Knight and Amy Urbina. Um, Cameron is a, a really fabulous actor. Um, we were very lucky to, to get to do the part. He couldn't do it because his mother was ill, and then he was in Chicago, and there was, you know, we were auditioning other people, and eventually he managed to find someone to look after his mum, which was really great, and he came out. Um, and uh, he was just terrific. I think Othello is one of the best things that we've done, and hopefully he will be back with us uh, next year. And um, now the actors that you work with, you, you, you sort of had a repertory company for a while. Um, um, and the same people, uh, a core group of 12 <coughs> or 14 people doing as many as 30 yes. or 40 roles. Yeah. Thing. That, that must be a wonderful challenge. Um, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's sort of the old-time classic view of, of, of theater. I think what's fun for an audience is that they, they actually get to know the, the actors and they, they start to try and, they, they find out what we're doing in the next season and they start casting it. You know, they go, oh, is Bernadette going to play that part? Or, you know, is Danny going to be doing this? And, and they, they, they develop a relationship with these people. And most theatres now cast show by show, um, you know, for various good reasons. But it, it is nice to work with a core of, uh, uh, of people and just become a little bit of a family. And that's how Shakespeare uh, did it. It's exactly how yeah. he did it. They were all sh sharers in his company, yeah. So, uh, oh, this, is this Much Ado? This is Much Ado About Nothing, yeah. There's right. Dogberry and uh, Leonardo. And Verge is played by Bernadette Sullivan. There's Melissa Charlesma, our artistic director, and myself behind her. I'm, she's uh, Beatrice, and I'm playing Benedict. And I must say, the artistic director, fortunately, is, is your wife. That's very lucky. Ma yeah. It makes for a good working relationship. <laughs> Most of the time, yeah. Most of the time, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, now, are these all shot in the park? With this, is this the new park? Venue? This is the, the. This is all in Griffith Park. Yeah. yeah that's great. Um, that, and and that, the working in that space, that must be. Uh, uh, I mean, you're you're outdoors. Unamplified. Unamplified. Well, 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 which is the way it was done for most of its life, anyway, yes. these plays. Yeah. Um, but the, but um, uh, uh, working in the dark, uh, how do you manage to, to suggest the environment um, with your sets and, and in that kind of open air uh, uh, environment? Um, well, generally, we, we construct something at the back that will have some kind of flats. Mm -hmm. We try to be as vague as possible. You know, we don't try and you know, build an Elizabethan mansion or something like that. I mean, we had a really nice set this year. For the first time, we hired a set designer who really knew how to paint, and the, you know, it looked great. And it was, uh, you know, it was a very large piece that we put. There's a lot of wind in Griffith Park, so we had to be uh -huh. braced. <laughs> yeah. Um, quite and you a can bit. do a lot with light. Uh, we can. Well, you know, we the one of the the principles of the company was to work within the restrictions that faced Shakespeare when he was. Ah. originally producing so um, we don't have artificial sound we don't have amplification we don't for the most part we don't have lighting effects you know Shakespeare didn't have lighting effects right. if, if if a character comes on stage and it's it's nighttime he'll say oh it is 12 o'clock get thee to bed Francisco or something like that and then the audience knows what time of day it is and it, we don't need you know so uh, so we really tried to work within those limitations or those opportunities um, and uh, uh, so as a consequence of that, we, we just basically get a nice wash on the stage. Um, I wonder if Shakespeare were alive today, if he would use lights. Uh, if Shakespeare was alive today, <laughs> I don't know what he'd be doing. <laughs> he might not be a writer. You know? <laughs>